Welcome back to beautiful Florida here in the villages for a special edition of Spicer and Company, a town hall with Governor Ron DeSantis. And Governor, we want to talk about veterans now. I know that there is a large veterans community here in the villages and a large veterans community here with us right now. If you have served, if, would you please stand so we can recognize you out in the audience and on stage? Thank you all for your service. As I said, I'm a military brat, so it's very kindred to my spirit and appreciate all that you have given and sacrificed. And thank you, Governor, for your service as well. And Sean, you as well. I uh, actually want to go to another Ron in the room. Uh, Ron, who is a veteran, would like to ask you a question. Well, first, Governor, thank you for being here. Uh, we seriously appreciate uh, you coming out, talking to us face to face rather than hiding behind your desk. <laughs> I'm sure that not everyone knows that uh, you are a veteran of the U U.S. Navy. Go Army! <laughs> As a fellow veteran, and on behalf of the thousands of veterans that live here in the villages, I want to thank you for your service. Happy to do it. My question, military related, could you comment briefly on what your military service taught you and what it has meant to you since then? Well, it's a great question and thank you for that. Um, you know, I do think uh, the motto of the Navy was honor, courage, and commitment. And uh, when you're doing things, anything in life, but obviously if you're in office, uh, you know, if you just live by those values, uh, you're gonna end up okay. And, uh, and I think the folks that I, that I serve with uh, overwhelmingly upheld those values every day, sometimes in very difficult circumstances. You know, sometimes you know, we'd have fun on shore duty, but I remember being in Fallujah and Ramadi uh, back in, during the surge uh, in, uh, in Iraq. Yeah, not the best place in the world to be, for sure. And a lot of the guys I was serving with had been to Iraq and Afghanistan multiple times just in the previous few years. And so they put a lot on the line for the country. Uh, but at the end of the day, my view was when you wear the uniform, you're effectively writing a check uh, payable to the United States of America for an amount up to and including your life. And anyone that does that, that's a noble calling. Um, and when you do it with honor and integrity, uh, you're really following in the best traditions of this country. And so I think it's helped me with leadership. I think it's helped me with um, you know, understanding that if you're in a position of authority, that you have a special obligation uh, to, to, to do it right. And so we've tried to do that, and um, I think it was great experience. I never necessarily knew what I was going to do, but uh, this was after 9-11. I think a lot of us felt that, that we needed to do our part, uh, so we did it. I met some phenomenal people, and uh, anyone that uh, I ever interview for a job, if they, if they have served in, in the military, that's a huge plus for me. Um, well, it's, um, oh, and let me, I'm proud of this. So I just signed yesterday a school choice bill. We have more school choice in Florida than anywhere in the country. But for the first time, we said kids of active duty military, you know, if you're serving in Florida, uh, you know, you're going to have access to these school choice scholarships, regardless of whether there's a wait list or anything like that. Because if you're stepping up for us, we've got to step up for you and your family. Well, it's, uh, it's National Police Week. You just signed bonuses here in Florida for first responders, police officers. Andrew is a former retired police chief. Okay. He served in the military. Andrew, you have a question for the governor. Yes, I do. Thank you, governor. And thank you for the bonus for the first responders. We appreciate that. Yep. My, my son happens to be a firefighter in a, in a department not too far from here. Oh, so good. I know he appreciates the, uh, sure. the extra money. Thank you for that. Um, like Sean said, I'm a retired police chief. I had almost 40 years of law enforcement service. And even before the defund, abolish the police movement, um, I and many of my colleagues were having a hard time finding qualified candidates for the law enforcement profession. Just not a profession that people are drawn to any longer. Um, it's even more prevalent now in some of the major cities. They are having a very hard time finding qualified candidates and you have thousands of officers retiring because of the anti-police atmosphere. 
doesn't appear to be a problem yet here in Florida, but I think it will be soon. What can we do to attract and maintain quality law enforcement applicants to stay in the profession to keep Floridians safe? Well, it's a great question. Thank you. For where were you serving at as a police chief? In uh, Towski Valley, New Mexico, and I retired as a captain from the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. Oh, okay, office great, well. great. Yeah, so good folks there. So, well, the first thing we can do is, is have a governor that stands by law enforcement. It makes a difference, and I'm happy to do that. Second thing is, and I actually don't think it's going to be a problem in Florida, because what's happening is people that get alienated with the lack of support they see in some of these cities, a lot of them are applying in Florida because they know they're valued here. And so one of the reasons we wanted to do the, these bonuses was to recognize the fact that they had to show up for duty every day during COVID. There were some people who were able to work on Zoom and all that, and God bless you if you can, but you couldn't do that if you were in law enforcement. Uh, you needed to show up. You can't arrest a criminal on Zoom. You gotta be there. So, um, so they were there day in, day out for us, which we wanted to thank them for that, but even more, they had horrible treatment across this country uh, the last year with, uh, with all that's going on. So we wanted to do that as a token of our appreciation. Um, and then we wanted to say, you see some of the things that were happening in Minneapolis, all these places. That's not happening in Florida. When we had the, the protests last summer, I called out the National Guard, say we're not having riots, we're not going to do that. But I also understood you can't just be on defense, you got to go on offense. So we passed the strongest anti-rioting pro-police bill in the country this year. And that, that bill says a couple things that I signed. Uh, one, if a local government tries to defund law enforcement, the state of Florida is putting that funding back. We're not gonna let you defund the police. We're also not gonna let you get away with shirking your responsibilities to protect the public. So if you have a riot and you tell police to stand down, and your damage or your property's damage, you sue the local government for your damages because they're the ones that were responsible for not keeping the peace. And then finally, we said, if you riot, if you loot, if you assault people, if you attack law enforcement, uh, we're not just gonna bring you in, take your mugshot, and put you back on the street. You're going to jail, and you're gonna spend time in jail. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.